yourself into contention for that podium position. There is no other way to get through this event. If you go back into the archives of the old CrossFit Journal, um, there was this uh, really old article and it was called How Fit Are You? And it was a series of basic tests that Greg Glassman had put out. And it was almost like a proto CrossFit Games. It was really cool. And I thought that concept was really cool and just really pure CrossFit, you know? Um, in the early days, we used to talk about that all the time. It's like, all right, well, who's better? The guy that's faster or the guy that's stronger? And the answer is, well, neither. It's gotta be both. And that's what I wanted out of this particular test. Um, the jerk, what I'd like it to be is really, really heavy. And um, in my mind, where I'm landing is 300 and 200. That's where I'd like it to be. I looked at the results from all the um, uh, complexes from semifinals. And this represents a little bit higher than 90% of the average for the field. So it might be a little too stout. But keep this in mind as you guys are warming up. That's kind of what we're aiming for. If you think you can nail it on paper, you're wrong. And that's why we have to go through many stages of this. And that, that's something that Dave was always really good about. And, and one of the things I learned a lot from working with him for so many years is like, no, man, you keep testing it, you keep refining it, you keep pushing it until it's time to go. Because um, otherwise, it's not going to be where it needs to be. It's really important. I was surprised that Dan Bailey taking 300 for a ride <laughs> in testing. <laughs> it was awesome. Uh, I was surprised actually at, well, if, you, if we look at the way it fell out, you know, we had the rain delay, we offloaded that test to Thursday. Athletes didn't have anything else going on that day. So, you know, presumably they're a little more fresh coming into it than they would have been if they had done it on Wednesday as originally planned. Um, and yet I feel like they, we're more conservative on the run than I would have thought. You look at like what the human animal is gonna be asked to do, and I think uh, getting somewhere fundamentally is a very important thing. Can I get from here to there? And then what does that look like? Can I get from here to there across a long distance? Can I get from here to there when time is of the essence? Can I do it really fast? Can I do it faster than the other thing that's either chasing me or that I gotta get ahead of? So I don't know, I think that there's a lot of utility in that getting from A to B. It's a big deal if you want to be fit. <laughs> if your kind of specialty lines up with other things, you probably find ways to justify that actually lifting an object overhead <laughs> carries more weight than me being able to move from A to B. I thought they would have come out running a little harder. Um, so I was a little surprised by that. Yeah, like if this is where you had to do that event with that body. second event but there is a possibility for 200 points on the table that's what's unique about this event they're gonna run so three two one go they're gonna run the 400 in the time remaining they're gonna come back to the platform here and off of jerk blocks they're gonna get as many shoulder to overhead as they can with a really heavy weight personally I feel like if we do this event and we get it right with the loading and the time and the rest if somebody is in the top five on each of these, we might as well stop the competition and give them the trophy right now. Like, I, I really believe that this is going to set the tone for who's going to be on top at the end of the weekend. If you have somebody who's like second place and third place in the running and the lifting, it's like, well, they're it. They're the spread that we're looking for. Well, Tia proved me right. <laughs> but the point I was trying to get across is that if you have somebody that's like top five in the, in the sprints, and top five in the lifting, you got a contender. Because it's really, really, really hard to be good at both of those things independently 
And it's even harder to be good at those things when they show up at the same event. Now, Tia, you barely took your hands off the barbell in that last set. What did you know that you needed to do in order to get that 100 points? Just be super consistent and uh, just keep attacking. And mentality on this next day of competition, given what yesterday looked like, how are you feeling? Yeah, I'm, I'm ready for a fight. I can't fucking wait. Congratulations, ladies. Thank you. If you think about the prototypical CrossFit Games athlete, like this is as high level as you can get, it's going to be somebody that can run fast, stop, lift heavy, stop, perform these different skills, stop, and comma, do all of those things across a single test that blends them together. And I think that's what's lost sometimes is everything is, gets, gets blended together all the time, which is the bulk of it, and that has to be the bulk of it. But there still needs to be these opportunities for people to uh, express these more singular attributes. And you see that. It's funny because people accept it with lifting. You know, they accept it when it's like, okay, it's a one rep max, so like everybody gets it. But you start applying that in other places and all of a sudden people have a little bit more hesitation around it, which is a little strange. And I think about this all the time, you know, like as, as uh, stats driven as CrossFit can be, and I think a lot of other sports can be, there's still a reason that you run the race. And that is because you don't know what's going to happen on game day. You got to have a pretty informed opinion. You can get close in your predictions, but you wouldn't tune in and you wouldn't watch it if you didn't think that something could happen on race day that you didn't anticipate. One of the criticisms that I've heard a few times for people that I, I don't think are really investigating fully what the games were this year, but, but they'll say like, oh, there wasn't that much CrossFit. And I'm like, okay. <laughs> this is a great example. To me, if you look back and you, you do your homework and you understand what CrossFit is, I mean, it doesn't get much more pure than this. You're gonna run fast and you're gonna lift heavy and you're gonna have to be good at both. I mean, there it is.